just we got the door open. Silvio will be joining us here momentarily. Hopefully everybody is having a great Monday. I know that usually <laughs> kind of doesn't go hand in hand, right? You have the weekend, which was Father's Day for some of us, myself included. Uh, I have a little three-year-old and two-year-old and I have two baby girls. So it's always fun getting a card with a bunch of scribbles on it. <laughs> and we know that means happy Father's Day. So it's uh, it's kind of fun. I know I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of being a dad. So, all right, there is Silvio too. Again, hello everybody. Excuse me for not having my camera again, but I am in the middle of a move, and sure. you know, my office is getting moved out too as well. So I uh, don't want to show everybody a bunch of packing boxes. Uh, but uh, welcome in. We'll give people a couple more a uh, couple more minutes until uh, until we get going. Uh, obviously, the topic of today and the next series of topics are going to be building a website uh, from the very basics. Very yep. And then as we get further along, we'll teach, uh, you know, more technical, more, more some tricks that maybe you know or don't know. And obviously, if you happen to know some, some tricks along the way, definitely offer those up too as well. Everybody here wants to learn, uh, myself included. So, um, you know, just open up your platform, kind of kind of follow along. And then obviously any questions, you know, stop us. Well, we won't necessarily you know, but stop, but we're going to read these questions and hopefully we can answer them as we go to as well, because this is really a lot more of Q and A, you know, as we go through it, ask us some questions. What is that? What does this mean? What does that mean? That kind of thing. So you can get, you know, if you ever had a single question in your mind, now is the time to get these all answered. And then also know that some questions you may have, maybe we are going to handle in subsequent uh, webinars and we'll let you know that too as well you know we'll simply tell you great great question we plan on answering that a little bit further on down the line and this is really one where as you have we've mentioned this before but as you have questions if you're in building a, a site and you come across questions write them down know that all you have to do is attend one of these webinars and you're going to get your questions answered too as well so um, definitely. And so a couple more minutes. Um, I'm loving where everybody is from. We got people from Barbados. I know Edmonton, you know, they were, everybody was uh, having all the smoke issues too as well. Canada was on fire, they were saying. Uh, we got Ireland. Obviously, we got Italy. Um, we're actually working on uh, an Italy platform too as well, which we're pretty, uh, pretty proud of the expansion that we're doing. Houston, Texas. Awesome. I used to live uh, in Houston for, gosh, about 10 years. We're in the process of moving back to Texas, Southern California. Three years. Awesome. I recognize you, Jason. San Antonio. Great place. Philly, Vancouver, South Wales. Interesting. France, North Carolina. Wow. Every time there's a, a couple people from places we have not uh, tuned into. So that that is awesome. Awesome, Claudy, Southern California. Yeah, I was watching the uh, U.S. Open uh, yesterday, and you know, they show you back in the distance, and it just looks like L.A. was covered by a cloud. New Zealand, James as well. I know where you're from, James. Calgary. Wow, we really are all over the world. This is kind of fun. Philippines is in here too as well. Chris from the U.K. Chris has got a. Heck of a story. Chris, uh, I believe you just got married too. Or maybe that was a, another gentleman who just got married. Don from Calgary, Alberta. Awesome. All right. So hopefully yeah, um, everybody. And, yeah. Ahead, and, and, yeah, Scotty. And by the way, now I don't know. I saw a Frank uh, France. I don't know if it's his name is Frank. I mean, his last name is France. But as you mentioned um, earlier, we have this, um, uh, well, so congrats, Chris. Apparently, that was him. Anyway, uh, we have, we are having, we are starting this, I mean, I hope, uh, successful and fruitful, fruitful cooperation with, um, with a, you know, an Italian entrepreneur, uh, which usually is here with us. So um, what we did basically, okay, maybe helped by the fact that I'm Italian, but you know, that's not really anything special in reality. So we are creating a dedicated platform for him. It's going to be our, let's say, exclusive or in any case, our main reseller um, here in Italy. So he's going to take care of support and all that. So I think 
it, it can be, and it, it already is, uh, Scotty, and correct me if I'm wrong, a pretty good uh, <coughs> uh, success case study for, uh, you know, penetrating in other um, in other markets, right? So if you want to expand, so, you know, the, the platform is completely, um, I mean, we can translate it completely, uh, you know, we can adapt it to different pricing, different, you know, currencies and all that. So that is definitely something that if you're interested in, uh, and if you are obviously very serious about this thing, uh, it's something that we can, you know, we can very happily do. And it's a discussion that we, we will be very interested in, in having. And again, uh, we, it's, you know, you know the, the, the Italian partnership um, is uh, the first one that we have of this kind. And at the moment, it is, it is pretty, pretty, already pretty successful. So, you know, it can be, a, 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 you know, a, a, an even further opportunity for growing and for building something and for building something together. Yes, exactly. You speak another language uh, and you're interested in, uh, in what Silvio just said, just please okay. reach out to us, reach out to uh, you know me directly, if you will. Um, you can go through the platform, however, or you can respond uh, to the webinar registration. You'll see my emails in there, admin at mobifirst.co. Mm -hmm. uh, that comes directly to me. So if you're interested in that, and obviously only serious uh, people, please um, do that. But it is a humongous opportunity that, uh, quite frankly, is wouldn't be offered anywhere else. Uh, but it's working out very well for us, obviously, in, in the States and in and then if somebody looking, you know, Spanish is is a big one. French would be a which would be a big one. Um, we're in Germany. That could be another one. So um, if you're interested, please let us know. Um, and the well, only yeah, then we have, for example, sorry, I saw here we have Edwin from the Philippines. That's mm -hmm. another great place. You know, mm -hmm. East Asia. Uh, you know, anything is. You know, the the beauty of our platform is that it is completely white label. I mean, truly and deeply white label. So it can have a different language, a different logo, <coughs> different, you know, terms of service, different currencies and everything. So, you know, I think it's a, it can be a, a very interesting opportunity actually for, for anybody that wants to, that wants to take part in this. Um, so given that we said um, uh, that this is mostly a QA and a session, right, Scotty? I see there mm -hmm. are, quite a few questions already so let me let me start answering them so brian is asking when building a site which has subdomains does one need ssl for the main site as well as each subdomain yes because that's um apart unless it's the www subdomain which is still a subdomain um but is usually which is usually included in the naked, let's say, um, uh, domain URL, uh, you need a dedicated SSL for each uh, <coughs> for each subdomain. We are planning on selling on the AWS server uh, what, what are called wildcard certificates, which will be obviously more expensive, but we, but which will cover all um, any uh, subdomain for a, for a domain. So until we start selling those, uh, you will need a dedicated SSL for each subdomain. Then uh, Magnetic Mark is asking, I have a client who wants to build a website. They don't have a website. The business is a husband and wife team. He runs the barber shop in the front and she does facial waxing and some beauty saloon. Uh, with two different customer base, do I build two sites for them? I wouldn't build two sites for them un unless they are two completely separate businesses. But honestly, uh, also to keep, I think, prices down a little bit, I would build a single site where I mean it's it's basic unless you know they have two separate entrances and are two totally separate businesses. Let's say that in general the our online presence should somehow follow or you know replicate our on land uh, presence, especially for local businesses, right? So if they are two separate businesses, just that happen to be run by a husband and a wife, then in that case, it makes sense to build two separate websites. If uh, um, it's not, that's not the case, then I would say just build one site. And then maybe, you know, if, you know, they, the, the website proves to be successful and useful and effective, you can always, you know, branch out uh, at a later stage. And never forget also that uh, 
and you know, remembering what we talked about in our last conversation about SEO, uh, the domain itself carries uh, some um, authority, right? So the more you can put, obviously, if it if it's, I mean, if it has meaning, right? Um, but the more you can put under one domain, uh, the the better it is in terms of SEO, in terms of domain authority, and all that and all the kind of stuff, right? Hope I answered that. Mm -hmm. If you're taking questions, I have questions on email. It used to be simple with SendGrip, but now it has changed. No, it's still, I mean, you can still use SendGrip, Jason, Jason Pesigan. Uh, you can still use um, SendGrid. Uh, we just, you know, um, added a few more options. Uh, so in, in addition to SendGrid, which exists exactly as before, so you enter the term API key, literally API key, as the username and then the actual API key that, that you will get. You can also use Gmail and you can also use any custom SMTP provider. You just need to enter the SMT, the actual uh, you know, URL of the SMTP, so smtp.gmail.com, for example, and then the username and the password. Frank, if you're interested, from France, as Scotty said, and again, Scotty, confirm me if this is mm -hmm. right, you can send an email to admin. Yes, I message, yeah. Yeah, at mobbyfirst.co and uh, we will be very interested in uh, in discussing i don't know yeah, if i messaged him in have, uh, roxanne oh, yes sorry yes i messaged uh i responded to uh to frank absolutely yeah. absolutely yes 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 absolutely uh jody thank you jason now you can connect with gmail instead of sangrid exactly uh, do you have a set of organized tutorials that will serve guys on how to build a website? Well, first of all, this is uh, one of those. This wants to be the first part of one of these tutorials. And then I guess we have uh, a ton of tutorials, right, Scotty? And yeah. and uh, let me even expand upon that. So, yeah, we have a wealth of tutorials in there. And at the present time, we have been working on, we're probably about 90% done of redoing all of them. So we will have uh, a whole new set of uh, tutorials that will be coming in and sooner uh, rather than later, we'll be going into each platform and updating all the tutorials with uh, all up to date and, and relevant ones. So they'll be in there. And we will also be, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I put it in here a little earlier. If you wanna scroll up in the chat, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll be putting in all our tutorials in there too as well. So you have multiple places for it. And then a little future information of it. We were more than likely going to be uh, using some AI technology too as well and having all the tutorials and questions being able to be fielded there. So um, right now the they are in the uh, the back end of your of your system. Yeah, you know, just go in and check those. And um, yes, and but yeah, like I said, new and updated ones will be coming uh, shortly. Yeah, so um, Gregory, is there a way to import a non WordPress site with all its directory files into Mobi first? Not, not really. You know, we try to, with the import tool, we try to import what we can, but given that, you know, you have to understand the structure of a website, uh, that's, not, that's not very easy. We um, will probably uh, do some exploration uh, using AI, not really... <coughs> uh in reality not really importing it but somehow you know trying to um uh, trying to um, uh, at least understand what the website is uh, that what the website is about uh magneti mark going back to your business to your question about the business they are one business okay with only one site how do i get the seo to work and get the site to rank with the two different customer bases remember that uh, and if you weren't here last week you can maybe go check out the the um, the webinar, the, re the recording of the webinar. Um, remember that when I talked about the original algorithm by uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page, the founder of Google, it was it was called Page Rank. So the concept of a site is something that came a lot later. What I mean by that is that each page actually ranks with its own, you know, uh, ranking factors. Right, right. So having different pages. Uh, Will allow you. It's not really that. It's not really a matter of being under one site, or it's not that important. It is important. There is, we said, the domain authority, but it is also important that each page is optimized on its own. And you know, we show, we talked for an hour last week about SEO. Actually, we talked for two hours because we said we did two uh, sessions on SEO. So there shouldn't be a problem to optimize each page 
for its own um, keywords, uh, no matter, obviously they need to be related. If it's like a car dealer and a dentist, it doesn't really make sense to have one, one site. But given that they are, you know, in a relatively similar niche, I think it makes sense and you can then optimize each page on, on its own. Uh, Mark, could you briefly clarify to us what the new billing structure mm, actually is that you are taking control of? Mm, no, actually, I don't think there's anything new. Uh, we only offer some new features, mainly the AI features uh, on some new plans. But clearly, it's just an upgrade if you want to do that. If you don't, just keep the plan that you're on right. and you will you know, be able to use the platform as it's always been, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, on v1 should the content block widget have the ai button in it if i create the site from my users at the moment it doesn't well at the moment well you need to allow it uh, to at the moment we are testing it let's say on at the first level of our customer so you our you know white labels or uh you know the some you know the users that purchased and that are you know using the platform directly from us we'll see now we'll see how to pass it along how to allow you to pass it along to your users down down your line um okay if the back end can we control turning on and off the access to the site if the client doesn't pay their monthly fee that's how we set up the business model for our clients well uh, you can change the ownership of um of a website at any time if you assign it to a user or you can block access to a, web, a website we'll, we're gonna see all this uh, um you know as we progress uh, in the webinar but yeah you can you know or password protect the website right. or anything like that right mm -hmm. so scott there are different ways that you can that you can do that uh will there be a change in where we can have more control on where to put the button text name i think they're on limited mm. well mm, jason the reason why we don't really allow uh, you know move you know moving around uh, uh, moving around you know things uh, and um and uh you know dragging it around uh, is that uh, that type of uh, um, approach to building a website uh, is very desktop centric right because obviously you do it on desktop no you drag and you move uh, but that's nowadays uh, a minority of the traffic uh, that is uh, usually uh you know experienced by websites on, on mobile, and that's why also our builder, um, the main view of our builder is the mobile view, because that's how people are gonna see your website. So, you know, and that's why we thought about a structure with widgets, right, which are components in a, uh, in a, in a web page, uh, and you, dra you can drag those around, but it doesn't really make sense to drag and to move. That's, that's like, in addition to being a desktop centric approach, it is even more than that because it's a more like a paper, uh, you know, um, centric approach where you actually move uh, if you, you know, need to, you know, prepare like a leaflet or, you know, a, a, a billboard, you can center and move, but you never know in advance on the web, especially now, who's going to view your uh, web page <coughs> and on what device they're going to view it. And on what you know resolution and all that so i think it gives you a false uh, sense of control over the page and you really never know in reality how that's going to look like so i would really css is different because css which stands for cascading style sheet so you know it's like a cascade of things css gives you the flexibility to actually anticipate how things or tell the browsers how things should look depending on the screen size depending on the and on other values so that is why we don't give you all that freedom because it's a false sense of freedom because you arrange your page very nicely then somebody you know um, uh, reduces the screen the window size and everything gets screwed up right or especially since we are a mobile first platform somebody use it on on mobile and uh, i mean you you lose uh, all of that per pixel perfect you know alignments that you had uh, that you had done right uh we can draw uh, yes sir uh, i was there once again watch the replay your information is exactly what i want to answer my question thank you all right thank you Ma thank you mark is the website import functional yeah it should be obviously it's not perfect and it's never easy to import uh, 
uh, websites. Again, uh, we're going to work on um, AI, an AI-powered power, version of that in the next weeks, if, if not maybe months. Is it possible to add affiliates within with a white label? Can I make my customers affiliates of my product only, not going back into the actual corporate structure plans? Uh, I guess so, um, Scotty. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that um, we have enabled the affiliate system on everybody. Uh, on, on different plans, but I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the platform allows you to do that. Yeah, we do have uh, uh, we do have that capability on our own. It's not something that we're ever going to uh, actually sell, but it, it, it's to the lines. We could actually be our own JVZoo if we wanted to. We have the ability to set up our own affiliate links. Uh, we have done that in, in the past. Um, and most people that had it, honestly, they didn't end up using it. So we decided not to really make that uh, available anymore. However, if you happen to be what we like to call is a super affiliate, if you happen to have like a very, very strong, you know, email list that you think that your uh, affiliates uh, would be interested, then again, just contact me and we could always design something up special for you. But as, as a whole, um, we're, we're not actually using that uh, per se right now. The only thing that is uh, really being used is our e-commerce product affiliate tracking, which is uh, you know, a whole other conversation. Um, but right now, um, no, not, uh, Steve, the answer to your question directly is, is no. No, not unless you actually do have a very large, um, and I don't know whether you do or not, a very large following, or you're going to actually you know, set out and say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to market it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Um, there's reasons behind it since we've just been, you know, essentially picked up by a major, major company. And so um, we're uh, we're kind of keeping that as it, it was something that, again, we did in the past, but we're, we're not looking to do that anytime soon. So hopefully I answered your question there, Stephen. Yes, Mark, we are going to do the demo, but as we said, this is also mainly a q a session so i'm i'm more than happy to answer questions but we're going to do the demo very shortly um uh, gregory for the dark overlay feature for images it looks like a perforated screen instead of a smooth overlay uh that i think if you if i understand your question correctly that is a C that is a specific template yes. where we chose instead of having the smooth overlay like a, a little squared a back a transparent square background it's it's that template usually it's a mm -hmm. smooth overlay you can change that with css and i have the feeling that css is going to be a pretty interesting topic for so i guess another you know series of lessons about mm -hmm. css is going to be probably pretty pretty interesting in the future mm -hmm. but yeah so that's yep, just stay tuned to, yeah. yeah stay tuned of course yeah. stay tuned to all of them so yeah why don't we actually start getting into building since we're yeah um, we're running, a, you know, we don't want to go over an hour. So let's going to, we're going to go in and we're going to start at, at stage one, if you will. By the end, we're going to go through every little nuance of the platform until we finally get to the last page of the last items, which would be going into the style section, editing CSS, editing stuff like that. So we're going to save that one for the very end. And I know Silvio will also have some courses designed on his own. Yep. Um, that he's going to, you know, offer to people later on to learn even more um, about some CSS directly from Silvio. Uh, but for now, let's get into building a a website, and we'll uh, thank you again for all your questions. Uh, it was uh, well, yeah. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the actual questions uh, as we yes. as we progress. So if you have, yeah. I mean, keep keep you know keep, keep you know. Oh yeah, keep asking, them coming in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep asking questions. Uh, I'm gonna jump a little bit from here to there. But yeah, so yeah, <clears throat> I guess we start from our classical view, right? The list of sites, uh, and then uh, let's go literally one step at a time. So here, and uh, I'm gonna show you also something that uh, maybe not everybody's seeing, just to give you an idea of what AI looks like. Uh, and I'm gonna show you. So here are all the templates that we have. As you see, we have quite a few templates, uh, and then now. <laughs> We have recently added a live demo button, so you just click on it and uh, you uh, you see the, the website, uh, In I mean, you see the template, and uh, we're going to do this also with AI, and you see that this is uh, a template, the first AI template, let's say something, and as we, when we will choose this, uh, 
uh, when we will choose this, um, we um, we you will be asked some um, you know to fill some details so that the contents of the website will be already uh, provided uh, according to what you to what you enter. So we're gonna see. Okay, so I guess I need to share. Let's say that I share Chrome, so that's gonna be faster. All right. Uh, I guess you see the screen, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, the, as usual, you start from choosing a ready-made site. So we're gonna choose an AI one, okay? So as you see the setup here, so sh choosing this template, uh, when you choose this template, you're gonna be you're gonna be asked a few additional questions like the site name, business name, and the topic. Right? This is the most important thing because this is what allows the AI system to actually generate contents uh, for your website, right? So for example, you would say the topic or the business um, that we're talking about. So for the classical example that I usually do is the nail saloon in New York City, right? And we're gonna see a site which has been built with this, uh, uh, with this uh, um, keyword, let's say with this topic. Then you can tell the system, you can upload the logo, you can choose the images category here, so that would allow uh, the system to pre-populate and replace all of the existing images with something which is related to the uh, to the site topic. So in this ca case, it will be beauty hairs, and then uh, you can add some ad even ad some further additional pages, which will be created automatically. Right. So now we're gonna do as they do when they you know when they show recipes that we're gonna go to the baked uh, version. But, you know, this website, the site that I was going to show you, was built, was done starting from that uh, uh, AI template and then adding Nail Saloon in New York City. So you're going to see that this website was built in 30 seconds, basically, and it has already everything that, let's say, it, it's, it's ready to be used as a website for a nail saloon in New York City, right? And... It has all been generated and replaced. And also some additional pages were added, right? So some additional pages here. And then we also have a blog. And this uh, post was generated automatically, uh, was generated auto automatically by the system. All right. So here's the classical, um, you know, interface that we have for our uh, website builder. Mm, I just want to put you to give you some, you know, small uh, details that maybe sometimes you haven't noticed or, you know, just go over um, the builder. We're going to go very in depth <coughs> in each section. Uh, so we're going to um, uh, we're going to go, you know, we're going to analyze everything very, very deeply and spend some time on each one of these sections, um, you know, as we progress in these uh, in these lessons. So the first thing that we notice here is that here we have the domain. And at the moment, this is the base domain that we give and the base URL, sorry, that we give when we create, uh, when you create a new website. You can copy it by clicking here. You see it's been copied to the clipboard and then you can paste it, for example, here. Okay, then you can always get automatically a QR code, right? So you can uh, uh, save that Im this image and you know use the QR code on uh, you know leaflet, billboards, um, uh, business cards, or anything, or just you know open it in a new in a new window. Then uh, you see that when you click on view site, well, we always know that this. Uh, um, you see it in the in the three main screens. Uh, Right, so on mobile, on desktop, and on tablet, and then you can always share, you know, this preview because maybe you want to send it, send a preview to your customers or something like that, so you can get the shareable links. Right? Okay. So this is the direct link to the preview, and this is the direct link to the website, <coughs> or get a larger QR code just like we did, just like we did before. Okay. Uh, then here you have all of the sections. Now, I don't know if you ever noticed uh, that in addition to the main pages and in this section right here, uh, you will see only, let's say, the main level one pages. But then if you move one page, you can move one page under the other. OK, you will not see it here. Well, obviously, if we refresh, 
uh, you will not see it here anymore and you will see it only in the list and what this did is basically that if, you, if we now go to view the site you see that now we have a drop down menu where we have the top level page link and then we have the blog so which is the children page to this page right here um this is the same thing on um mobile with the difference that in this case we have the first level page and then when we go into this page we have the uh, option to go back or the actual children to this page okay so you can change pages change levels of pages uh, uh, however you want you see we just change it and it's now back there is no um a drop down menu anymore they are all on the same level you can also let's say hide uh, a page from the menus um or better now in this case uh, it's uh, shown because it's at the same level of the home page uh, but it will not be shown as a children to the home page right so you can move these uh, uh, around as you as you want okay uh now so speaking about uh, um well now here we we are yeah we can uh, show the owner of the website and now given that we are um, um we can change ownership uh, usually when we are resellers we can change ownership of a website uh, and then obviously this is one of the most important elements uh, because yeah okay the site name but especially the domain right so this is where we would write uh, the we will give the domain uh, uh, sorry, this site a domain. So nail saloon, saloon new your city dot uh, site, something like that. Okay. And then we save it, right? Once we give it um a domain, we are provided with the uh, DNS details. Okay, so we need to create an A record which points here, and then we need to create a C name. Uh, the, the, if we want to have the www C name that points uh, to this uh, value right here, okay? And here is also where we can purchase the SSL certificate for, for this website, okay, for this domain. Uh, the header is another pretty important, the header is this section right here, okay? Which on desktop is this section right here, okay? Here we can control a lot of things, we can hide it completely, right? So if we don't want one, and sometimes it makes sense to hide it, all right because you know maybe we're just one page then we can say that we want to fix to the left to the right we can have it default at the top we can have it fixed at the top so when we scroll it always stays stays there you see that it stays there okay uh, transparent or reappear with scrolling so we scroll it and it reappears when we actually scroll it so it, it scrolls up and then when it's the page is completely scrolled, it reappears. Then we can upload a header image, which will be shown here in the left top left, and a favicon, which is the one which is shown usually here, right in the tabs of the browser. So like this one. Now we have a default favicon here, uh, but this one, for example, is a favicon, and so on. Okay, we can also change uh, the uh, let's say zoom let's say of the logo that we would put here so to make it bigger again all this uh, should be done with um, css but we sometimes allow a few things to be controlled in the uh, in the actual website builder so let me go back here uh ba, 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 ba. the spreadsheet mortgage perfect is good for using with a rank and rent business model i don't know what that is use your platform do i need to get my own thing no mark we offer you hosting that is one of the main characteristic of our platform you don't have to worry about anything we host your website you don't have to buy hosting all that that is really clever thank you and the head of split is 50 percent to have two slides is there a split yes i'm gonna show you uh that's a little trick that we did with css and with two uh, sliders yes on one of your other pages, it's possible to have the logo instead of the left home arrow. Some clients have asked this. Uh, as usual, you can always do this. Uh, well, we, um, uh, you, if you put a logo, it will be shown there. You mean on the other pages? Yeah. You can always hide things with CSS. I think, uh, again, um, we can, 
<coughs> sorry, we can customize and do all, all of the options, but then the system will just get too complex to actually manage. There, are, there will be too many knobs and, and, and gears and stuff. You need to learn CSS. A little bit of CSS, not you don't have to become a graphic designer or a CSX guru, but you need to learn some CSS because all of the 90% of the questions you have, um, uh, ninety percent of the questions you have uh, will be answered by a little bit of CSS. I mean, that is, I'm sorry, I know, but it's like you want to do. I know that a car salesman doesn't have to be a mechanic, but if he knows a little bit how the engine works and all that, that's going to make his life so much easier, and it's going to make him look and actually be so much more professional when he's going to sell cars. So I'm sorry, but just a little bit, a tiny bit of CSS is going to be essential if you want to use the platform at like 95% of its potential. Obviously, there's that final 5% where you have to know maybe C JavaScript, CSS, and be like our Benny in, the, in, the, in, the, in our group. And I mean, I would be more than happy to teach you all that. Um, uh, but uh, that's really that's really something uh, very smart. Can those base domains actually rank online as they are? If we create the no, 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 no. Uh, the uh, our let's say what you call Warren base domains they they have a no index. Uh, let me show you that. So this is the source of the platform of the of a website, and uh, the, we have a no index. So these base URLs. Uh, are not indexed because they would generate a ton of confusion, duplicated content, and all that. Only when you um, uh, when uh, um, you um, give the site a domain and actually enable it, then in that case the no index is removed. The the let's say uh, automatic no index. Obviously, if you want to add no index to your website, you are more than free and uh, to do that for whatever reason you want to do it. But the base domains do not uh, do not actually um, rank. The, now I get why there are restrictions in designing. Yes, exactly, 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 mm -hmm. Jason. Uh, that is why we, we did it, yes. Where do you suggest we learn um, a CSS. Well, uh, <laughs> what, can I, what can I say? Uh, there are tons of resources. Uh, I would be more, I mean, again, it's something that we have been working on for a long time. And uh, I think uh, the CSS course that we're going to release uh, is going to be probably the, the most useful. I think not so. because I'm obviously the best teacher, not because I'm the best CSS guy. But the main reason is that we're going to do CSS, so, so learn CSS applied to the mobi first platform so you're gonna learn css and then as an example usage you're gonna see it apply to mobi first so you will be expert in css because css is a standard that you can use on wordpress you can use anywhere but at the same time you know in 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 the hands-on approach will allow you to be even more effective and even, and even more powerful in on the on the mobi first platform right I know if I can chime in here for a little bit because I am sure. nowhere near a CSS uh, master. I don't know CSS at all. Uh, let me put it to you that way. Um, I'll even go back a little bit. Uh, I actually took up a course in the local community college to actually learn CSS. And uh, after talking, being in two or three classes, I actually quit um, because our platformers already do a way more CSS than this actually course was teaching until like year two or year three. Now, what I have done is YouTube is a great place. Uh, another one I personally have used is CodePen. And, you know, it's just trial and error, if you will, right? Uh, and we will get into that, as Sylvia said later. And then what I ended up doing on a basic thing, I lend, I mean, I've done a Star Wars crawl. I've done a typewriter effect. I've done you know, bolding of headers, uh, really, really simple stuff. And then what I've ended up doing is as I've learned it, I made up a Word document put it in my Word document, and then I had a cheat sheet for CSS code that I can actually use quite frequently. And um, so that's just my little two cents. As Silvio gets further on in our courses, he will teach CSS. He's going to go into the basics. And then anybody who actually wants to attend his, his university teachings uh, will be open for that too as well. So sorry, yeah. I just wanted to add that little bit. No, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yes. Uh, Kevin, can the AI be trained to code the CSS we will need? Yes, it could. Why not? Uh, I think it always makes sense to use AI when you know, I mean, to use it as an assistant rather than a replacement. 
So when you know, but you just don't have the time or, uh, you don't, you know, because after all, AI is not AI. I mean, it's not general AI. It just basically collects a bunch of documents from the web and compiles them in a way that seems, uh, uh, you know, that seems uh, intelligent, but it, it's not. It just, uh, you know, you can do the same thing by searching on Google, basically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sure, why not? Charles, if you create a PWA on this side, will you be able to modify the structure? Of course. The mm -hmm. PWA is just like, a, 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 let's say, a, um, I'm going to say a, a, something that you put around the website. The, the website structure is independent from the PWA. So the only thing maybe is that since PWA, it depends on the level of, of aggressivity, uh, aggressivity that you give the cache. Uh, but in general, you know, if you change the structure, the PWA will reflect it. So it's just, again, it's just a, 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 a like a cover that you put around the website. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Warren, Moby first CSS is what I'm talking about. Awesome, very good. Uh, can we ask for suggest or suggest certain new templates that we can use? Uh... Oh, yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Absolutely, Scott. Uh, we are always open and more than interested in, in you know building new templates. We build templates by looking at existing Sometimes by looking at existing website, you know, we take inspiration from existing websites and, you know, coupled with, you know, what we can do and what we want to do and what we think is useful. So, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, use the support system and, um, and send your, your suggestions yeah. and we are will be working on those. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, too, um, Scott, if uh, if you happen to be a white label owner, you're also able to create your own yeah. uh, your own templates, too, as well. That's a. Uh, Another advantage Absolutely. of being a white label owner, yeah. Uh, Mark, um, will you provide us SEO training video to show just one example of what text we should put into the dashboard meta? I will actually description on what to place in that because I don't know what to put there. Uh, okay, dashboard meta. I'm not sure what you mean. I guess you mean um, uh, you mean um, no. I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, the we went over some is, of that in our last some, meetings. Yeah. yeah, exactly, Mark. I would suggest you check out the last two uh, webinars. Too. Uh, because we talk two hours about SEO. So yeah, they're not and then if you still have questions, feel free to, to send them over and we'll uh, we'll try to we'll try to answer them. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have so we completed the site header. Let's say we saw fixed at the top and blah blah blah. Oh yeah, we have this section here. Uh, this is okay, this is something that goes above the navigation bar. All right, so we also have this section right here, which is some cases you see can be useful because we want something above there, right? Okay, uh, this is uh, um, HTML. Uh, so here, um, all right, so we can put some CSS, uh, some yeah, HTML with some in, with some inline styling. Right, and that's one of the few places where you can put HTML. Right, so you see, as that implies, this has been changed to the color red. Right, so we can do all this, uh, all this stuff. Um, whoa, ground uh, yellow. Okay. So here I'm just showing you some little CSS. You see, that's as simple as that, and you, you know customize and you can add anything you want obviously here right so all right and we can then remove it <coughs> all righty okay then the header menu and links this is pretty interesting because it's it controls what you would see here in the menus right so uh, first of all you can add the search form okay and the show a qr code what does this mean when you add this this when you set this to on uh, and you save then uh, you see that on mobile this thing pops up right this new button and also on desktop uh, what is this useful for well uh, usually now all um, phones are capable of reading um, QR codes so it's something that you could use to allow people to quickly jump to the mobile version of uh, uh, of this website with their phone right Okay, so this is a little thing that you know allows you to uh, to do that very very uh, handily and very very quickly. Then uh, this is a pretty 
powerful thing because you can manually manage the header menu, right? So you could say, well, yes, okay, I know we have that, the blog page, but I want to, let's say, hide it. So you select the links you want to show. If you don't select any, obviously all are selected, right? So you do this and now, so we, you see, we said, okay, we only want to show these pages. And so if we go here, the blog is gone. It's only gone in the menu. Obviously, the page is still there. In addition to this, we can also add actually links, which can be anything, right? So let's say we add google.com, uh, right? And so this can be, uh, this is interesting, uh, a button or a text link, okay? So if it's a text link, it is exactly as another as another menu, right? Okay, you see. Whoops, I think we removed. Uh, I think now it it thinks. Okay. Oh yeah, because we don't want to manually manage the um, the header menus. Okay. So you see, we just added this link, which in this case is an external link. But we can also say yes, but I want to show it as a button. This is useful, for example, for offer, special offers, I mean, to highlight something in the header, right? So you see now, obviously, this would have to be, I mean, this website is not, let's say, ready in terms of CSS. It's not ready for this, but this would be, uh, can be customized with CSS. But you see that it pops up even too much, a little bit. Uh, but you can, I mean, it's, it's pretty powerful, actually, to add something to the header. And bear in mind that the header is shown on all pages. You see, the header is always there, shown on all pages. Then you can delete this. All right. Uh, and then there is another pretty interesting. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have social links in the header. Um, and uh, for example, if you have uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes, uh, facebook.com. This is a pretty handy and easy and fast way to add uh, social links in your header, you see, and also here, so you can, and, and then, so you can add, that's a, you know, a convenience thing, right? You can do, you know, we try to do things uh, giving you flexibility, total flexibility, but at the same time, also giving you some convenience stuff, right? This is not really essential. You could do this uh, by adding a link in, in the header and then uh, customize it with CSS, but we say, okay, you want to do it? We can give you uh, uh, something, you know, that already allows you to do it. Um, finally, we have uh, uh, some custom code in the head section, right? This is something which, you know, is a little bit more technical. But if you need to add uh, some usually JavaScript, uh, you can do it. You can do it here, right? And this will be added to the head section. And let's go back to the to the source code, right? So you see that this one, the one which starts with a head tag and ends with a, ends a lot more further down. Yeah. Ends here with a closing head tag. This is the head section. And you see that this script, this thing here that we use for the fonts um, is what we added here. Right, so we tell the system to add this this script, these pieces of code in the head section. Okay. Okay. Questions? Not a whole lot. Can you embed okay. code you to add that? content? You know, search bar works. Okay, ma'am. The past two webinars you've heard to share. On one side, I've added a Google Translator of the header. It translates each page. Yeah, nice job. We can add scripts as well. Yes, we just show this. Uh, so, have you find your our YouTube channel? Yeah, that sounds pretty good, Chris. Okay, Warren, can you can you embed code to add content to um, to a mobile first website? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, can you embed code to add content? Yeah, well, you can embed code. Then I don't know if that you want to use that to add content to a mobile first website, but yeah, you can embed code. That's the place where you embed code that you want in all of the head sections of your of your website. And that's usually, usually you know, the, um, the, you know, analytics code, even if we have a dedicated spaces for that, space for that, 
but if you want to you can use this one then we have a footer obviously now in this page the footer is empty but then we have a footer and you can customize uh, the footer in two ways we can you can add some content here this is let's say the legacy uh the legacy way to do it right so we have now some content and so now i cannot show you because yeah so we have this thing you see that the content has been added to the footer or even better actually you can use uh, you can add widgets just like you would do in any section of your website, right? So you add a, a, a widget that says this is the footer, and then you add some text. This is some text, and then you go on, on two lines, and then you can add images and all that. All right, so we added this widget to the footer. Okay, so you see it here. And then you tell the system if you want them all, on, on desktop, <laughs> obviously, if you want them all in the same row, so they will be split evenly, and then where you want them, what you want them aligned, center, left, or right. So now we can add, you see, this is the footer, and then we can add another widget, which can be, for example, a map, let's say. Okay, then we're going to add Fifth Avenue, New York. All right. So we're going to save this. So we, we have added two widgets in the footer. Okay. Right. So we have this and this, and we want them all on one row. So they will be evenly split. Oh, sorry. That's the wrong. And so here they are. Right. So split in the middle. One, one um, widget here, another widget here. We can add another one. Okay. For example, uh, a list review of what's in the blog. All right. So the blog. Now we're going to show you this one too. Let's see if it works actually, because I sometimes discover things as I use the platform. All right. Okay. So you see that we have now three widgets in the footer. Content block, then the map, and then this list preview, which is a pretty powerful and interesting widget, which allows you to create a list pre a preview, let's say, of items that you have in uh, in another list. Okay, and then as we had uh, the option to add uh, uh, scripts uh, uh, in the head section of the website, we also have the option to add them in the before the closing body tag. Some uh, some you know platforms uh, uh, like analytics or Facebook or whatever else require you to add some code uh, before the closing the closing body tag okay so that is the footer right then we have the media library that's pretty self-explanatory in a sense that uh, you uh, manage here all of the images uh, your images for the, your specific website we don't have any because all of these images are taken from our free, from the free media library that we put, and that we allow to use. But you can add images, uh, uploading them here to your specific media library uh, so that you can then use them anywhere without having to re-upload them, right? That is basically what the media library, what the media library does. Questions? Uh... Okay. Well, I think Lyle had one about the search bar. Uh, yeah, the search bar. I think, yeah, I think um, uh, we will do a not a dedicated, you know, in-depth analysis of that, but we'll talk about that. I think there are, uh, you. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think you are right, Lyle. Uh, we need to check uh, if it's working correctly. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a, in a future. Also, because that is related to content. At the moment, we are seeing a little bit the structure, the general structure of the, of the website. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a future, uh, in a future you know, lesson, let's say in a future webinar. Um, but yeah, uh, it's going to be checked uh, and it should find the uh, items uh, uh, that are available. Um, that are available. Yes, I agree. I absolutely agree, Lyle. And, you know, with e-com, uh, it's even more important to have more options, uh, more options for search. 
Uh, do you allow all autoresponder integrations and mailer light? Is there a way to have it? Um, no, at the moment we have uh, uh, get response and MailChimp. Uh, I think that probably the best way forward and Scott, mm, let me know if that makes sense. Uh, probably the best way forward is to use uh, Zapier. So we actually integrate with Zapier and at that point you can then, um, uh, you can then, uh, you know, funnel your your contents or funnel your data to any because otherwise we will have to do 20 30 uh, single in, in integrations but you know we'll 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 see we'll we'll it's definitely an area where we need to that we need to fix and that we need to work on okay yeah jody i i absolutely uh, agree uh, it should search uh, uh, all of the list but you know it's something that we need to work on it's something that we need to work on <clears throat> All right, <laughs> so we said the media library. Oh yeah, never forget that uh, you have in the website, so it's not related to the white label to the reseller, but in each website, you have a user's management feature, which is extremely powerful because it allows you to create in a couple of clicks uh, um, a member section, uh, you know, a member's, website right because baby basically you uh, you tell the system to um, enable login and registration right and then you tell the system uh, what fields to you know request to ask during the registration and then how would you use this there are a few options one is for example in e-commerce that you say require login to use e-commerce. So what you can do is you can limit access to the e-commerce function. So you know putting in the basket in the in the in the, in the basket and then um, you know uh, proceeding with checkout and all that only to logged in users. But then above all, well not above all, but then in addition to that, you can also in each page require login. Right, so a pay now obviously this is disabled because it, login is not enabled, but you can require login to access pages, right? And you can even do that on a single widget, on a widget by widget basis, right? So you can say, okay, this widget now obviously it doesn't really make sense for this widget, but any widget, so I don't know the map, the calendar, uh, any you know content that you want to limit somehow. Um, you do it here, additional options, login required, okay? So you can do this. So that's where the login and users section come uh, very handy. And then remember that you can always view and download users, right? So people register and then you can always download, obviously nobody's here, but you can download these users as CSV. Remember, this has nothing to do with the white label and that kind of stuff. This is for each single website. So you build a website for a restaurant and you can tell them, look, we can have, a, let's say, members only area where you put, I don't know, recipes, for example, and you uh, only people that register um, can the log, register and log in can access that area. So the blog is only viewable by um, logged in users at that point that is an incentive for people to log in and register and at that point you can use that to actually build a list that you can then download upload in a mailchimp or anything else and uh, send uh, promotions and invites and all that kind of stuff so it's a very easy uh, way to uh, build a community and collect emails uh, I mean, without even thinking about it. And that is, I think, and I guess we are nearing the end. Yes. And that is uh, the beauty of, of our, one of the, I think, beautiful elements of our platform. We we make, we make really complex stuff very, very easy, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really, I mean, a membership area on WordPress, for example, is, is a nightmare because you have to, you know, download a ton of, plugins and then customize them and then it never works and then it stops and then it breaks and then you get hacked and not here blah 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 you just uh, uh click two or three things and then you have uh um uh you know um a membership website in three clicks two three clicks right 
So let's check uh, uh, the latest questions. Uh, does it make a billing? We'll serve them once the new. I understand that be able to allow that. <laughs> um, Uh, Steve, I understand that to be able to allow uh, 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 allocate an owner to a website, you need to uh, resell subscription. Yeah, the reseller, what we call the white label subscription, is exactly for that. In the sense that you have your version of the platform, it's white label, so you can customize it, create your plans and your users and all that. It will replace your current subscription, obviously, but it, you will not lose any website. You will not lose anything, obviously, if you want to if you want to upgrade. Um. Market, well, you know, it, it really depends. Uh, you can start building the site now or, uh, you know, use AI whenever you, because you can use, and I will show you, I will show you in the, in the future webinars uh, how you can actually use AI, not only when building a website. You know, I showed you very quickly how to use AI when building a website. So the template, you choose an AI template and then you use it to you transform it into a website, but there are other two main features, three main features actually, the uh, build a page with AI, uh, the AI auto blog, and then generate some content with AI into any content block. So, you know, you, you can, it's, it's really up to you. I guess you could start and then you can, you know, update your website with AI whenever, whenever you want to, whenever you will have access mm -hmm. to it. Love to get the CSS code for the header sliders. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a, a dedicated thing or or that. Uh, any plans to add reports on on ecom? Well, we have Lyle. What I can tell you um, is that um, we can um, uh, we can um, we have been working on AI at the moment, so that has been the the strongest focus for for the past few weeks. Next step is gonna be e-commerce. Uh, fixing a few issues here and there and adding new features like more advanced uh, and in-depth reporting. So it's it's coming, it's coming. Uh, thank you, Warren. Mm, can you control who has access to this login area? Does anyone who registered has access? Well, no, it's, it's a very simple uh, membership area section. So you build this website and then you enable uh, or require actually login um, and... Um, uh you then uh and then you limit uh stuff you limit sections page the whole website or pages or widgets uh just to uh register or logged in users actually um ba -ba -ba. what's the status of dot cross white label members i guess um, no news there in a sense that if you have a white label platform yeah you nothing have access has, to it. yeah nothing has changed there if you had yeah. it uh way back from years ago, you should be uh, awfully uh, glad that you got it and kept uh, kept that prices as is. But uh, no, nothing has changed there. As long as you maintain your your uh, subscription on it, it, it will be that case. However, if you have not maintained your subscription and you're looking to, um, we are not going retroactive into the you know prices from four years ago. It would be uh, today's pricing model, but nothing has actually changed uh, on that one, Tim. Um, the name of my client business, uh, they got the name right by putting the city, blah, 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 blah. that's having the city name. The business. Well, you know, it's, um, I, I, um, as I mentioned in our conversations about SEO, the domain is pretty important. So if they have uh, some keywords, uh, be it the, the, the city, obviously like nail saloon in uh, Wichita is a, pretty good keyword actually you know it, so if the domain is that it's it's a pretty good keyword right external seo do you ever make those website to boost the main website you know that's a uh, gray hat seo it can work um you need to be careful but it can be it, it can be powerful actually it can be powerful Uh, Steven, is it possible to create a report from a form free form entry to the site user? Create a form free entry and then allow a return a report to the company. I'm not sure I fully understand. Uh, I think this could be solved by at uh, the moment the form free sends. Oh, well, no, actually, we're going to talk about the form free or in general forms, uh, but the um, that those widgets they can post the data 
to a URL. So in reality, you can collect that uh, if you, you know, create an endpoint, let's say, where the data can be can be posted. Right. So I know Scotty, and correctly so, wants to keep the the mm -hmm. webinar at the more or less hour mark. Um, Yes, oh, yes, we're right there at the at the at the hour. Know, yeah. It's it's just a, yeah, British Columbia actually. That, that, that's oh, there it. we go. Sorry, yeah. No, I don't know. I it's a, it's a, I I'm I'm not in charge of choosing my coincidence my clothing. So so <laughs> I, I I really don't I really don't know. All righty, all righty. So let me um, let me just actually say that we are now at that hour limit. Uh, again, thank you, Silvio, for going over. And I'm glad that he, you guys and gals had a lot of questions that we could uh, we could ask and answer. Um, we will just start following. We'll leave off where we uh, will start off where we left off this time, and we'll continue on. As you can see, he is getting really in depth with it. With it. I've actually learned uh, some information today too, as well. So excellent. The last thing we wanted to state is if you actually see in the uh, in the Ninja platform. This is our last week of doing that $99 um, offer for the AI tool, the PWA, uh, the unlimited site. So this is our last week. As we go into next week's webinar, it will be over. And at that point, uh, anybody who's looking to grab our, our AI tool will be on a monthly basis. And we're looking at somewhere around $50 to $60 a month at that point. So please you know, act on this thing now before it, it it gets too late. We know a couple of you have asked us to extend it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And yes, we're, we're definitely up for that too as well. So make sure you can either click on the Act Now link in here or just simply log into your, your platform and do it uh, do it that way. I'd hate for anybody to miss, uh, to miss that. So um, awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. I think we've got pretty much all the questions answered. Thank you, Silvio. Again, look for the replay coming out. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can find all our webinars there too as well in one nice neat place and that is going to be a growing channel uh, too as well and the last thing I also want to say if anybody has a business or service that you would like to be interviewed with please also drop me an email at the admin at mobifirst.co and I would love to schedule a chat with you and see if we can't uh, schedule for a podcast too as well so again Silvio uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for Thank everything. You guys. Thank you and so we much. We'll uh, we'll see everybody mm -hmm. next week. Yep. Hope you had fun. Thank you. And yes. yeah, see you next week. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. So All right. Bye bye.